Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Danny, and today we're gonna to be looking at some fantasy recommendations if you're just getting into the genre. Let's start by addressing the elephant in the room, which is my bookcase. <laughs> so the old bookcase is now found uh, a home in another room, and this is a bookcase that I've really wanted for a lot of years, and I finally bought it, and uh, it comes in a whole bunch of different boxes, and one of them has not arrived yet, and so I can't actually assemble it. Uh, so I took my bookcase down with the anticipation of putting the new one back together, but I haven't received all of it yet. Uh, I just didn't realize that at the time of taking down everything. So we're just dealing with uh, the pieces right now. So this is uh, what will be. <laughs> so it'll be a surprise for hopefully my next video. I wanted to make this video for those of you who want to get into the fantasy genre but don't know where to start. I have a lot of friends that have never read fantasy before and so when they look at all of the options they're a little daunting, uh, especially if you look at some of the epic fantasies that are, you know, big chonky books. They're like, I don't really know if I want to get into something and make that much of a commitment. If you're considering getting into the fantasy genre, I wanted to give you guys some options that might work for you. I'm gonna start with some standalones. Um, so if you are having like commitment problems that you don't want to commit to a really long series or really chunky series, I think that The Magician's Daughter would be a good place to start. I've talked about this book a lot recently because this is one of my favorite books of this year, um, but I'll give a brief synopsis so you guys can figure out whether or not it's something that you would be interested in. In this book, you focus on a main character whose name is Biddy, who lives on a magical island that is kind of hidden from the rest of the world. Within this island, magic still exists. It's very prevalent. Um, there are magical beings that exist on this island, and she lives there with a magician, and the magician's familiar. Who? So the magician's name is Rowan, and the uh, familiar's name is Hutchincroft. Hutchincroft or Hutchincraft? I can't remember. I think it's Hutchincroft. Um, but he's this little black bunny, and he's adorable. He's one of my favorite characters from this book. Um, and so what you do is you follow Biddy's life and she has had a very isolating life because she's lived her entire life on this island. And she knows that there is an outside world because Rowan leaves the island every night to go and get supplies and bring them back to the island. And being, I think she is 17 in this novel. She's a young adult uh, and she's getting to the point where she wants some more independence and she really wants to go and explore the rest of the world. But Rowan has forbidden it and so it's kind of a point of contention between them. And one night when Rowan goes to get supplies, so he leaves the island, he doesn't come back. And Biddy knows that something bad has happened and so she talks uh, with Hutch and Craft and tries to figure out a plan for helping Rowan return to the island and figuring out what happened. Throughout helping Rowan, Biddy gets to experience world off of the island, and it's not really all that it was cracked up to be, or that she thought it was cracked up to be. And so she gets to see kind of the effect that the world has had. I don't know if I've said this yet, but the, the rest of the world does not have magic, um, or if it does, it's very hidden, um, and only certain people have access to it. And so the rest of the world has suffered because of that. And so she gets to see kind of how good her life was, but then also how she might be able to help other people. Uh, and yeah, it's just a really heartwarming story. There's a mystery involved in it. Uh, you get to spend time in kind of the fantastical, you know, island that she is on, but then you also get to spend more time in the real world, the real world <laughs> for her. And so if, if you're just starting in fantasy, I think that this would be a good place to start. The next standalone I want to talk to you guys about is Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. And this book focuses on a girl named Mara who is a princess, but she is a younger princess and so she has not had to give up some of her freedoms for her family as her older siblings have, her older sisters specifically. And her uh, one of her sisters has been married off to a not so kindly person, a prince and he's very abusive and she wants to save her sister from this situation. She knows as a princess though that she does not have the power to do so alone and so she goes out and seek of help and you kind of follow her journey uh, throughout this and as she's going through uh, these different trials she picks up these different characters that she travels with and that help her through this task. This book was very most of T. Kingfisher's writing is very atmospheric. You're gonna feel like you're living in, you know, with the journey or on the journey with Mara as she tries to save her sister. And 
I just really enjoyed the uh, this is definitely a journey book, so you start at one point and you're traveling for most of the book. So if that doesn't sound like something that interests you, maybe consider one of the other options I'm going to talk about. Um, but you get to see all of these different pieces of the kingdom and all of these different uh, worlds and things that are happening in this fantastical realm uh, that might play a part in her saving her sister. So it's a really fun story. It's a very short story. So definitely if you're looking for something just to kind of get a taste of fantasy to see if you like it, I think this would be a good one to try. Next, if you guys are considering even more of a commitment, but not something as big as like a five book series, I think you guys should consider the Villains duology by B.E. Schwab. And currently this is a duology. There are rumors that it's going to continue, but it hasn't so far. So right now there's only two books in the Villains uh, duology, and the first one is Vicious. This book, you follow Victor and Eli, who are both the villains in the story, and they are in a world of superpowered human beings. So some people are, some people have superpowers, other people do not, and they are both. Um, I believe uh, it's been a while since I've read this book, but I believe the book starts with them, and I think you get a dual timeline with uh, them in college, and they were both studying. Uh, kind of sciencey fields and trying to figure out more about this superpowered human beings and how their superpowers come to be and uh, what's happening there and one of them goes down a path that's darker than the others they don't agree and their the story in itself is them their power struggle against one another and this book I think is really fascinating because of the fact that it is still uh, set in our world, I think, other than the fact that people have superpowers, obviously. Uh, and so you still have, you're still a little grounded in reality, <laughs> but there are some pieces of fantasy put in. Um, and you get to see things from a villain's perspective. So someone who's definitely not a good person and does not try and hide the fact that they are not a good person. Uh, this is, they're definitely like bluntly honest uh, with their uh, reasoning behind their decisions. And um, it's just, it was a really fun and quick storyline uh, to get through. So I don't want to tell you much about the story because I do think that you should kind of go in blind uh, a little bit, but I think that if you are considering getting into fantasy uh, and you like superhero stories, that this might be something that would be a good gateway read for you. The next recommendation is a larger series and it's more for romance fans. This recommendation is one that I'm going to assume that most of you have heard of, uh, but if not, I wanted to throw it out there because I do think that this is a good starter series if you are considering jumping into fantasy romance, and that is A Court of Thorns and Roses. This series is very large and very big in its fandom, and so I'm going to assume that you know about this storyline, but just in case, you do follow a young girl named Feyre who is a uh, little down on her luck as far as her family goes. She is a hunter um, and she is trying to feed her family for the winter. And there is in their world a section of the world that belongs to the Fae. Uh, and fairies have some different things that they believe and that kind of bind, uh, bind them and their kind or people who interact with them two specific set actions. And something happens where Feyre ends up bound uh, to one of the Fae and you follow her storyline uh, in this new world, adapting to her new environment. And then there's also a bit of a romance involved. This story is so big, <laughs> I really don't know how to explain it other than just giving you a little bit of a taste. Because uh, I do think that if you're interested in fantasy romance, I think this is a good place to start. Sarah J. Mass, I believe, is very accessible. Uh, I don't think that her storylines are super, I don't want to call other storylines convoluted, but they're not really complex. Uh, it's very easy to follow. It's really fun. It's a very fast read, even though these books are a little chonky. Uh, and I think the romance is fun to follow. The next book that I'm going to recommend to you guys is by one of my favorite authors, and it's a little bit more of a commitment. There are three books, they are chunky, but there are three books in the first trilogy, and this does have a second series that goes along with it as well. If you love the world, you can stay in it for as long as you want. 
and that is Mistborn Era 1. If you guys have never heard of Brandon Sanderson, he writes books very, very quickly. <laughs> so if you end up liking his writing, you're not going to run out of things to read because he already has a huge backlist and he puts books out at least once a year. Uh, it's insane how much he writes. But his books, I believe, are very accessible, just like kind of what I said about Sarah J. Mass. I don't think that, um, I, I think that his storylines are probably a little bit more complex than I would say Sarah J. Mass's are, but I will say that if I think his books are complex because they connect to other books. He has what's called Cosmere. He's built this universe where a whole bunch of different books, not all of the books that he's written, um, but a whole bunch of the different books that he has written have connections to one another and they are all like with it, set within the same universe. And so some of his books are quite complex in the fact that they pair back to other storylines or there's just a lot going on because it's a very expansive series. That's more his Stormlight Archive series, I do believe is a little bit more complex. I think the Mistborn series is a good place to start with Sanderson if you are going to start his works. Uh, although I did not follow that. I started with The Way of Kings, which is Stormlight Archive number one. Uh, I just did not realize how big and expansive his worlds were. Um, and I, I've done just fine, I think, <laughs> with reading the Cosmere books. Um, and so I just think that it's going to be easier if you've never read any fantasy books before, if you want to get started into high fantasy, uh, is going to be Mistborn, that would be my recommendation. So this book, you start off with, uh, the main character, Ven, who is kind of a street urchin. She works in a thieving crew and she has had a hard life. She's a teenager at the time that this book starts and you know that there's something different about her. Uh, there is something that she calls it luck, her luck, and she has this ability to kind of change uh, how certain people interact with one another. We'll leave it there. Vin lives in a world where the bad guy has won and so you have people in slavery, you have uh, a noble, like a ruling class along with who is called the Lord Ruler and things are not great for people who are not in the noble class. The people who are in slavery are called Ska and they are a race of people in this society and then you have the noble class. Some Ska are not in slavery, some of them uh, are workers uh, throughout the, the different cities, but a lot of them are enslaved on farmsteads uh, or used as servants. And so there is definitely this divide. So there's kind of a little bit of politicking going on that you get to experience. There's a group of individuals in this world who are trying to take the Lord Ruler down and kind of change society. And so you get to follow their journey and then uh, gets kind of swept up in that. It's really fun. It's really fast paced. Like I said, I think it's accessible to people who've never read fantasy before. Uh, and I just think, I think it's a cool gateway into this very large universe that if you really do like it, you can kind of dig in even deeper. So those are my five fantasy recommendations for beginners. If you are fantasy readers, what would you recommend for beginners? Leave those in the comments down below. That way anybody who gets to this video has a list of recommendations that they can start this wonderful genre. I hope you guys find a book that you enjoy. Also, if you do happen to pick up one of these books or have picked up one of these books in the past, let me know what you think or what you thought in the comments down below. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you have a lovely evening and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.